So, saved by a stroke of brilliance, almost ruined by a stroke of idiocy. But this filter is in between the impeller and the cooler, not clean. And the risk, and then normally this isn't in, but I put it in to help me find the impeller pieces if it would break. Well, I can tell you one thing, if it has to work this hard, it will break. So, Fortunately, it was almost. Ah, that could have created a big problem indeed. Seven Windrows. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Sailing Windrows. This is the second part of an episode on sailing to Vlieland, basically around around North Holland uh, in the Netherlands, and um, we uh, we made it. We made it to Vlieland, so you can see everything in the first episode somewhere uh, up there, um, and uh, that was a bit of a lucky bet because that filter that you just saw got quite clogged because at a certain point of time we had only 40 centimeters of uh, water under the keel and that obviously means that there's a lot of sediment in the water that's being sucked up by the uh, by the water uh, uh, cooler so anyway we made it it was time to enjoy Vlieland because we made it oh lekker soft ice yeah Mm. So I actually uh, had never been to Vlieland and I really liked it. It's one of the more greener islands. Uh, they actually have a pretty nice and rather small harbor. Uh, if for instance you're used to Tessel. And from that harbor uh, it's actually very easy to just walk to the, to the city. Uh, not a big city uh, but uh, plenty enough city for sure. Uh, and one of the things that we love a lot is kibbling. Uh, kibbling is uh, basically fried fish caught. Uh, and I uh, ordered a nice uh, uh, meal of kibbling. Um, after just browsing around a little bit, we walked back, had some discussions on uh, het wat, and uh, ended up on the boat again, uh, where we uh, started enjoying the evening and uh, making dinner. So Jacco is a Shea Jacco. We made uh, Kip Kerry. And we eat it with a spoon because uh, it's tasty as, the, as, as hell, I guess. Alrighty, bon appetito. Cheers. Cheers. So the Waddenzee uh, is actually a place that you need to pram properly because of all the tides and the currents. Uh, you can't, you could, but I wouldn't advise to just go out there and uh, have a blast. Um, so uh, after a good night's sleep, we uh, started with the proper planning for the trip back to Amsterdam. So here's the new plan. We're going to leave at 11.30ish, 11ish. And we want to be here on top of Vlieland around high water Harlingen, which will be 12 30 ish and then we should have the current with us all the way down to Eimuiden and there we're going for Tom the Baluren 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 right next to the spoil grounds so when we go through the harbor in the there I guess we're going to make a video sharing all happy with ourselves uh on the downside there are not a lot of stops here so there is a sort of a no go go moment right around here so uh we there we really need to make a choice uh, and if we then continue then well we commit it i would say what will you say Jaco? let's do it let's try it let's, let's give it a try right okay. yeah I'm out of it is. I'm out of it is. Good. <laughs> Quite exciting. First time at sea. And really curious to see how the ship behaves. Because uh, uh, the current, or actually the waves, are a bit different uh, on at sea than on the IJsselmeer. And the Markermeer, which are very shallow. Those choppy seas. So uh, I hope to find a really relaxed boat. Uh, okay. Almost ready to go. Jacko, ready to go? I'm ready. We're ready. We're waiting for the tea water to boil. 11 o'clock sharp. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna get out of this place. 
We are at the North Sea. Yes. The most important thing is, I was super curious how it is, how the boat behaves at sea. And what do, what would you say? She's doing great. She's doing great, isn't she? Yeah. She is, this is amazing, boys and girls. This is like, it really feels really good. North Sea. North Sea. So now I know that the North Sea can be a bit of a klotzbak as well. Uh, there's no ocean swell or no nothing, but this was for sure the first time that we were out at sea with this boat and uh, Being it a centerboard and I was super curious to see how she behaved and I actually think she behaved pretty well like a long keeler steady slow motion so I was super super happy and uh, it was a very good start of the trip. It's warm here <laughs> Or woolen uh, underwear. Woolen underwear. <laughs> and gloves. What's <laughs> up? Beanie. 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 I got extra layers, everything, and now the sun comes through. Then we're like two sweating sausages. <clears throat> I forgot my deodorant, by the way. Well. Yeah, I'm not the only one. You have your own bed, so... Uh... Exactly. That helps. This is really beautiful and it works like a charm. So in the Netherlands we have the concept of uh, sea wind uh, that normally picks up around four-ish at the end of the day. Um, and this time was no different. We didn't have a lot of wind up till here, but uh, at four-ish yeah, it picked up nicely and uh, we could actually do some proper sailing. Dat is een beetje openboot zeilers dit. Toch wel. Ik moet gewoon weten dat hij eraan komt. Anticiperen en terug. Maar ja, ik ben natuurlijk een kleine boot zeiler, dus <laughs> dit kan ik wel. While keeping course, we're making another course here, the main course. So yes, we have been eating on the boat. Yes, we have been cooking on the boat. Yes, we have been, I'm not sure actually if we made tea while sailing on the Marke or the IJsselmeer, but we never for sure had made dinner on the boat. And this was the first time to try basically the kitchen while under sail. Full surfen en eten. Genieten. Sorry, Jacco. Dat is toch niet te geloven. Dit. Oh, mooi man. Oh. Tien knopen schijnbare wind. Zie je dat lopen dan? Tien knopen schijnbare wind, zes over de grond. Ah, twee over de, twee over de grond. Ja, dat is nu even. Maar hij loopt zo meteen weer harder. Ja. ja is een drie halen we wel. Toch aan het eten, dus. Uh... And totally free of charge, another top tip from Jaco came in because he actually, during cooking, noticed something on the wind indicator. And now we're in Kino, mate. See you that? Yeah. We go heen and and weer and it's going to It's a grappig. It has nothing to do with the wind. We are a bit more at ease. Uh, we have a bit less energy from. Um, Basically all the communication we had already done, all the excitement that has already been there. And it was now a matter of being one with nature and just sailing the boat home to Eimuide.
now things are great things are great sunset on the north sea if we see the green flash maybe we meet jack sparrow that will be nice flying dutchman so and if there's one lesson that i always learn if i'm on a boat be prepared with food because you need it you need it for being warm you need it for for comfort you need it for energy and especially when you need it sometimes it helps to take a bit more sweet food not too often especially if you're in it for the long haul but sometimes from the sun the sunset I've spotted an ISO 5 and I have an assumption what it is and I've just learned that you should not have assumptions because it's deadly. So I'm going to look at, up on a map and two things can happen. Either it is the assumption, <laughs> which would prove me right, which would actually create a problem because it's better that it's wrong uh, in that sense. Uh, or it's something else and then uh, well we have to uh, figure out what it is so fortunately it was uh, not the assumption uh, and it was off by about 20 miles so uh, that proves that if you then go into the harbor 20 miles early you will not end up where you want to be um, so don't assume check the map uh, plenty of time anyway so just do it um, on that note uh, we were about to head into the harbor of Amaida a bit later when it's fully dark, uh, but it was exciting nevertheless. Our uh, sergeant major it wasn't cool. yeah. spotted a, a red light and a green light. I really don't know if you can see it, but here is Amaida. And here is the entrance of the port I'm out in. That's a Priscilla ship passing. We're gonna pass behind Priscilla. And then uh, the dredging ship, because we Dutch love to dredge, we dredge all day long. It's over there, you don't see it, you don't see anything, but uh, I guess. The good thing is there's the moon and it has a smiley face. That's beautiful. So what did you do at two o'clock in the morning? <laughs> so sweet, sweet, sweet success for sure. Uh, it was also very special to be hold, uh, hailed on the radio. Uh, say the vessel Windrose, what are your your intentions? And I was like, what what my intentions? And so I said, I would just want to go to the harbor, sir. And he said, you mean the marina? I, I, yeah. So that was really funny. But uh, in the end, we made it. We docked and uh, we looked at what we did the day after. Good morning all, we made it to Marina Seaport Aymaiden, yes, and uh, it was uh, three in the night, we're here, we made it. We did take a box for boats that are like 90 foot, but uh, well. At least it fits. Home was waiting, it was sunny, uh, there was a wind right on the nose, so we just fired up the diesel and we said let's go back to Amsterdam. Good morning, they're going around us. <laughs> oh my god, look at that big baby. Jeez. Like to give you a bit of perspective. <laughs> oh no, they're huge, and now we're going to the locks. Yeah. We're 
returning home. Home sweet home. On our way to Amsterdam via the North Sea Channel. Hi folks, on our way back. Slowly, slowly. And it's actually quite nice. The North Sea Channel is a channel where you see a lot because you basically boat right through the city center of Amsterdam and the outskirts. So plenty enough to see for sure. So, interesting little detail is that this is Dame Shipyard. And this is where my previous ship has been sandblasted and recoded. Actually going to the same windmill park that windmill park windmill park, windmill park that we visited so uh, they have quite a journey to go that's like all the way to that's Markermeer uh, no yes. Iselmeer all the way to Cornwader Zand which is uh, this took us a day so uh, they'll be going for a while I guess and then we have the ferry use the ferry a lot love the ferry. Here you see the central station of Amsterdam, straight in front of you. And in case you didn't know where it is, they put it on the roof. Ah, oh, so handy. at home just one more time through the locks and the bridge and there we would be back on the Markermeer again one home to the last lock the last bridge before coming home. Welcome. An adventure. Ah. Ah, salty cider. An adventure to Vreeland. So, yeah, that big smile, if I look at it, it makes me smile again. I learned so much and I want to thank you for that Jaco really big time because you pushed my limits. Um, I learned a lot, feel a lot more confident on the ship uh, and it was just an amazing time. It was super nice weather. It was a bit of a pity that there wasn't a lot of wind, but uh, in the end, I think, you know, it was perfect. It was a perfect trip uh, and I'm sure we're going to make another nice trip uh, next time, anytime soon. So for next episode, there is actually a special because this trip made me realize that you do need a steering device if you want to basically do these longer stretches. So we decided to buy a wind pilot from uh, uh, Peter in Hamburg. And what better than to just pick it up in Hamburg? Bit wiggling through all the Corona shit, but we just went there and I took my brother along. So next episode will be about us going to Peter in Hamburg and Peter explaining what a wind vane actually does and why it's so, well, so why it's such an amazing device that you also want on your boat because it does not consume any electricity. So curious to see how Peter's wind vane factory looks Join us next time on Sailing Windrows. Sailing Windrows.